real talk. I haven't seen this many comments, tweets, chats, DMs, just questions and confusion in general about anything since eight gigabytes versus 16 gigabytes on last year's M1 Max. And what I'm talking about is should you get the M1 Pro or the M1 Max MacBook Pro? And yes, because despite all of the reviews, all of the recommendations, all of the benchmark LARP, it still seems just super hard, really an inconvenience to get a simple, straight, easy to understand answer. Well, I'm Rene Ritchie, and I'm gonna give you that answer right now. So I think the reason eight gigabytes versus 16 gigabytes was so confusing last time was because the M1 was only an ultra low power Mac and people who would normally buy higher end Macs were just desperate for M1, did not want to wait, and were trying to figure out if they could fit into the more widely available eight gigabyte models just as a bridge, as a holdover. And I think the reason for M1 Pro versus M1 Max, the reason it's so confusing now is pretty similar. It's broadly the same because in a way, it's simpler than the old Intel i5 versus i7 versus i9 with Iris integrated or AMD discrete graphics. That and the whole reputation that M1 has built for punching way, way above its weight. Plus, honestly, 2021 being as awful in its own way as 2020, especially in terms of how much everything costs these days, I think people really do want to figure out if they need to go max or if they can save some money with the pro. And yes, it totally does not help that every second tweet is from someone saying how awesome or terrible the battery life is because they don't realize surfing the web in Safari hits just so different than rendering video in Premiere Pro, or if there's a memory leak, or if you're stuck on Intel emulation in Rosetta and the app just never bothered to update for Metal or any of a dozen other things or other contexts. So for people who really wanna know which MacBook Pro they can get, you can get as a bridge machine for the eventual iMac or Mac Pro, or if you're a pro and you're just looking to switch to the MacBook Pro for the very first time and you're wondering how much MacBook Pro you really need, how much you need to spend, well, here's the honest answer. If battery life is the absolute most important thing to you, if you need to be able to use your MacBook Pro away from main power, to use it a lot, and the added size and weight just isn't an issue for you because you just need your laptop to last as long as is mechanically possible, get the 16 inch M1 Pro. It'll save you 200 to 400 bucks off the cost of the M1 Max, or it'll let you put that money, that extra cash towards more RAM or more SSD instead. Because the 16 inch has just a bigger battery, so you have more potential power to begin with and a bigger thermal envelope, so it doesn't get anywhere nearly as hot, and there's even less chance the fans will have to power up. The M1 Pro also has fewer transistors. So in other words, that means fewer graphics cores, fewer media engines, and potentially less RAM to light up, which means it uses less power as well. Now, yes, it does have a bigger display to drive, but all in all, that combination of bigger battery, bigger thermal envelope, and less silicon just makes it the battery life champ. And of course, if you do light up all the transistors in the M1 Pro, like rendering video with a ton of effects applied, with screen brightness all the way up on a shoddy Wi-Fi connection on a hot Arizona day, you can absolutely still kill the 16 inch battery really damn fast. That's why I keep saying potential because battery is like fuel and a bigger tank is just a bigger tank. The more and the faster you go, the more and faster it'll go. Now, conversely, if performance is the absolute most important thing to you, if time is literally money or far more precious to you than money, and the faster you can get through your work or the more work you can just get through on any given day, is if that's just everything to you, then get the 16 inch M1 Pro Max because the CPUs are mostly the same, mostly, because I'll get to the one exception in a bin down minute. So if you're doing music with a ton of plugins, for example, or anything that's CPU bound, it won't really make any difference at all. But the M1 Max has up to double the GPU cores, which means it'll just tear through any heavy graphics work from 
3D modeling to textures, transformation, effects, and more, and double the media engine. So H.265, HEVC, and ProRes, they'll all just render literally twice as fast. And while they're rendering, because they're on the media engines and not CPU or GPU bound, you can still use your CPU and GPU for other work, almost like having a second Mac to use while you render, if you even have the time, because they are so hella fast. And that's just because the 16 inch has a much bigger thermal envelope. So those extra GPU cores have way more room to breathe before they start saturating the cooling system. And the 16 inch even has a high power mode. So you can fully unleash the fans and the cores to get the most performance possible, at least within the limits of known physics. Now, I'm not gonna say it's like hitting nitro on the fuel tank, all the speed, but all the drain because I honestly just don't know anywhere nearly enough about racing to land that particular analogy, but I'm not not gonna not not say it either. And I know some of you are gonna ask about the 14 inch models. If you need to save some extra cash or you just really want something smaller and lighter to carry around to work on planes and trains and buses or in coffee shops, hotels, other venues. So they have physically smaller batteries and smaller thermal envelopes. So even though they have smaller displays to drive, they still offer less potential power. There is a bin down eight CPU and 14 GPU version of the M1 Pro for just the 14 inch models, which means even less silicon that can be lit up. So even less drain, even if and when it's fully lit up. And there's also a low power mode in Mac OS Monterey. And what that does is just reduce the overall draw in general. So you can get even more time on the battery that you do have if you're not doing anything too demanding or too intense. So that would be the best bet if you want or need the 14 inch model, but battery life is still really important to you. And if you want or need the 14 inch for those same maximum portability reasons, and you don't care about battery life, but you do care very much about performance, the M1 Max is still absolutely positively and monster even in that smaller thermal envelope. You can't go as long away from power, of course, but you can still get just a ton of stuff done really, really freaking fast. But also remember that Macs are built like aluminum bricks. They typically last five or more years. So don't just think about what present you needs today. Now, consider what future you or whomever you give or hand down or sell off to will need tomorrow. You can get batteries replaced if and when they age out. You can hang external storage off a USB 4 port, but you cannot add or take out RAM or swap an M1 Pro for an M1 Max chipset or vice versa. So if you have limited cash on hand, of course, only ever get what you can afford. And if money is no object, just get whatever you want. But if you're at all flexible, don't just consider the upfront cost. Think carefully about that long-term value. And I know on Twitter, or in comments, you may see people warn you away from the 14 inch M1 Max. And I, for one, took my own advice and got the 16 inch Mac for all the reasons I just went over. But you know who did get a 14 inch M1 Max? Apple's VP of Mac product marketing, the guy who helped spec it all out, and Apple's VP of Silicon, the guy who helped create it. Because they both want the power and the portability and everyone knows their own workloads the best. So seriously, ask, all the questions you want to ask, but make sure at the end of the day, you do you and you get what you really need. Also, make sure you catch the extended version of my interview with those Apple VPs. The scalability getting from where we were in M1 even to where we are in M1 Pro and M1 Max was a fundamental re-architecture of what we call the fabric, the interconnect through which all of these different cores connect together. And the big challenge- Ad-free and sponsor-free on Nebula. That's where I post all my videos, including extended versions of my interviews, reviews, and explainers, my exclusive documentary on the original iPhone. There was no question that was a game changer phone. That was ahead of its time. The iPhone really, I mean, it has changed, I mean, my life in so many ways. Also a little something on Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Cue the organ music. Because on Nebula, I have the absolute luxury of making videos that don't have to be optimized for YouTube, but where I just know the nerdiest, the most hardcore of you will totally love them. All ad-free, sponsor-free on Nebula and bundled in for free when you sign up with today's sponsor, curiositystream.com slash Renee Ritchie, or just click the link below. 
And right now, today, because you're watching this video, you can get CuriosityStream on holiday sale for 42% off, less than 12 bucks a year, less than the price of a USB-C dongle for the whole entire year. And that includes their thousands of amazing documentaries and series like Building the James Webb Telescope, the epic story told firsthand by the scientists who developed it, the enormous struggle and challenges in deploying the largest, most advanced, most expensive telescope ever made to see further into space than ever before. It is the absolute best way to support educational creators directly and just the best damn deal in streaming today. For over 42% off CuriosityStream, less than 12 bucks a year, and Nebula bundled in for free, go to curiositystream.com slash Renee Ritchie or just click the button on the screen. Clicking that button really helps out the channel and so does hitting up the playlist above for more, much more on M1, M1 Pro, M1 Max, and everything that's coming next. So just hit up that playlist and I'll see you in the next video.